has set the stage. Year is 1851. Wisconsin is a brand new state just becoming a state in 1848. The immigrants are flowing in. The lumber trade is booming. Everybody is looking for a piece of the American dream. And they're also heading west. So there's a number of immigrants that were left behind in Wisconsin to settle this rugged and tame land. And they did. One of those immigrants was an Irishman by the name of John McEntry. John and Bridget settled down in Kenosha, Wisconsin, assuming that they were gonna, I guess, live the American dream. But that dream was short-lived, you see. Bridget and John married in May of 1848. And Bridget, by all accounts, was a very pretty, young, naive, and submissive girl. This was a very toxic combination for the very controlling, domineering, and quick-tempered John. This was a fate, fated by fate, to have a tragically ending fate for this fated couple of ill fate. So long, long before the white settlers came to Wisconsin, the area of Kenosha was inhabited by the Potawatomi people for hundreds of years. Sadly, though, the United States government in 1833 would force these people off of their land. And this area is full of burial mounds and Native American relics and parks dedicated to a time gone by. So by the 1850s, this was a dramatically different place. Many immigrants were flooding the United States around this time, a mass migration was headed to the Wild West, and California was still in the grips of its gold rush. Those who stayed back in the East Coast and the Midwest were now laying down roots, settling cities and towns, and Kenosha, Wisconsin was one of the first established in the state. Being established in 1835, it was attracting a variety of folks from many diverse backgrounds. One Irish immigrant couple made their way to Kenosha, Wisconsin in the late 1840s, maybe early 1850s. That was one John and Bridget McCaffrey. So John and Bridget McCaffrey were an Irish immigrant couple that came to Kenosha, Wisconsin to lay down roots and begin a family. Unfortunately, John was a real piece of shit. He treated Bridget awful. He was said to be abusive, controlling, and very, like, he was a womanizer, would publicly cheat on her. I mean, he wouldn't even try to hide it. He was just kind of like, hey, I'm screwing this lady this week. <laughs> Take that. Just, and it said that Bridget was very submissive. Like, these are the words that I read to describe Bridget. She was naive, young, submissive. And it was just a very toxic relationship. And I could only imagine, you know, him being a kind of an authoritative figure and her just submitting to that. It's And this was the 1850s, you know, wife, shell obey man type shit. He was probably much younger than John McCaffrey. John was probably in his 30s, like mid 30s, I think he was like 32. And so Bridget, we can assume is probably in her early 20s, maybe even younger. Girls were like 15 getting married back then. Who the hell knows how old she really was. And it doesn't really say either. There's not a lot on their personal lives. And I did try to dig around as much as possible, find any information I could. And everything is so varied. Back then the reports just continually change. You never know. So I go with what's most consistent. Now Bridget, on the other hand, she was said to be naive, very submissive. Those were the words to describe her. And so that toxic combination eventually, inevitably, leads to Bridget's demise. John and Bridget McCaffrey wed in May of 1848, and at some point between then and 1850, they would move to Kenosha, Wisconsin. There isn't too much on their personal lives, but here's what I could find. John McCaffrey was born in Ireland sometime around 1820. It is stated that his occupation was a farmer. However, in the known photograph, the only known photograph of McCaffrey, he seems to be wearing the clothing of possibly a clergyman. What denomination of faith he was is unknown, but the outfit appears to be maybe Catholic? I don't know. What do you guys think? So, and then on Bridget, Bridget whose maiden name was McKean, I think, M-C-K-E-A-N. Bridget was also an Irish native, um, no specifics on whereabouts she was born or from, and there isn't even a photo or a description of the poor girl. All we do know is what people had to say, and it's said that Bridget was to be very kind, compassionate, um, she was a pretty young lady, perhaps a little bit naive, 
a, a stark contrast to the very ill-tempered and abusive John. It was also reported that John was promiscuous and publicly treated Bridget just awful. So by all accounts, he was just an awful, awful man. Dramatically opposite couple had a falling out on July of 1850. And it said that, I don't know what may have made John so belligerent that night, but he was out drinking and he comes home. Bridget, I, it was said that she was about to get ready for bed and something goes on that causes the two to break out into a fight. And they take the fight into the backyard where John mercilessly drags Bridget to their cistern, which is like a well, sort of like a, not, not, not like a well, but it's, you know, um, you know, where cows like drink out of and stuff or where you get your water and stuff like that. I'm just trying to think of something that I could compare that to if you don't know what a cistern is. Anyways, he drags her out there and the neighbors report hearing Bridget scream, Oh, John, please no spare me. And reading that shit absolutely broke my heart. Like I'm just imagining this poor woman out there fighting for her fucking life. And this prick is just mercilessly and drunkenly beating her and then he starts drowning her in the water. And that if that wasn't enough, he begins, like, like I guess, stomping on her skull. And then he just, and when he was sure that she was dead, he, he leaves the scene. And people quickly, obviously, they report it. And he is quickly apprehended, which leads to his trial the following um the following May, May of 1851, and a jury very quickly concludes that he is guilty and they sentence him to hang. Now, there had not been a hanging in Wisconsin since it had become a state. That this, this guy was the first. And the people of Kenosha were completely unprepared for what the fuck goes down, guys. On July 23rd, 1850, neighbors of the McCaffreys would hear a fight break out between the couple. It was said John had arrived home after a night of drunken debauchery as his wife was about to retire to bed for the night, when for reasons unknown, John became belligerent. Bridget was heard screaming out, and I quote, Oh, please, John, spare me, to which John dragged her over to the cistern, forcefully shoving her head into the 20 inches of water. To ensure her life had been snuffed out, John then jumped on poor helpless Bridget's skull. At this point, people were beginning to alert the police, and John was quickly apprehended. A jury would deliberate a swift and harsh punishment. John McCaffrey was sentenced to hang in August of 1851. So people are pretty pissed off that John has just mercilessly and callously taken Bridget's life. And they're demanding justice. I mean, like, there is a mob forming. People are pissed. So he sits in jail for a while. His trial is in May. And they quickly deduce he is guilty, guilty, guilty. And he is sentenced to hang. So he's got the hanging date of August 1851. And he's headed to the gallows. And this is drawing massive attention. I mean, everybody's talking about it a lot. Y'all hear there's going to be a hanging? <laughs> and so everybody's coming to watch. They all think it's going to be quite the spectacle. And so I'm assuming they're bringing the kids. <laughs> and it's just like a whole family affair. Well, it's nothing that they expect it to be. And it's absolutely barbaric barrack what ensues and so this crowd is gathered and the milwaukee journals there i mean like what it was in its infancy and everybody's there ready and waiting and they bring john out then they didn't have a gallows so they had to use a tree they hung him they they hoist him up over this big sturdy tree branch and actually the tree is still there to this day it's marked off on a plaque and it's you know he's it's, it's um, a famous grave for being the first and last execution to ever take place in this state. And um, so they hang John, and I guess it's just not what they expect. His neck doesn't break or anything, and he's just dangling there, and he's contorting, and it's very graphic, and everybody's just kind of standing there like, what the fuck? Everybody's just looking around like, is this the shit we signed up for? Like, what the hell? And so 20 minutes go by. They check John's pulse. He's still fucking kicking. Now they're getting a little like, all right, do we hang him up? What do we do? So they string him back up and he continues to dangle for another several minutes. And finally he passes away and the crowd somberly dispersed. That's what it was described as, is these people were just not prepared for the barbarity of it all. And it's 
it causes so much backlash. I mean, now they're pissed. They got their justice, but now they're fucking pissed because it was not the justice they thought it was going to be. And so they bring it to the governor. Now he's catching heat. The sheriff involved, you know, with the everybody involved with the hanging. They're all under pressure and they're like, shit, guys, we fucked up. And then it eventually just, it quickly passes that they, they just abolish the law. They're like, yep, no more. We're done with that. Life in prison, that's the sentence. And so there you have it. That is exactly why Wisconsin no longer has the death penalty. So with tensions high and pressure mounting, hanging John seemed to be the proper course of action. Now, contrary to popular belief, hangings did not occur as much as one would think back in the day. In fact, no one in Kenosha, Wisconsin was prepared for what they were about to see. On August 21st, 1851, a crowd of 3,000 onlookers came to watch McCaffrey's execution. When the hangman had secured the rope tightly, they hoisted John up the large tree, since they had no gallows, and where McCaffrey began to contort thrash, the crowd drew in gasps of horror. Now, they were just disgusted, and after about 20 minutes, they checked his pulse, and he was still alive. So they let him hang for several more minutes, and then he was finally pronounced dead. The crowd was said to somberly disperse, and this immediately caused outrage, which absolutely changed the law. And this is why Wisconsin does not have the death penalty. Now, the governor, sheriff, everybody involved received massive backlash, and it has not been forgotten to this day. So obviously, my pioneer ancestors did not take well to public hangings, and so it was abolished, we no longer participate in the activity, and yeah, it was just kind of a wild story, so I thought I would share that with you guys, a little bit of Wisconsin history, a little bit of an effed up creepy story for Halloween, right? And I, I dressed in costume for the occasion, but I would take us back through time. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me, and I will catch you guys in the next video.